Good morning. Welcome to the Greater Springfield Church of Christ in Chicopee. My name is Jim, Jim Buker. I've been worshiping here for 36 years. Um, in 2015, out of a moment of sheer desperation, the leadership here asked me to become the full-time minister. It's good to see some familiar faces that I haven't seen in quite a long time. On behalf of the family that meets here, we'd like to thank Paulette and Hendersons for returning once again to uh, display their professionalism, their compassion, their sincerity. On behalf of the family that meets here in Chicopee, we want to thank the Bradley family for honoring us with this opportunity to bless you and to bless others in the memory that the the memorial service for Sister Bradley. When I came here 36 years ago, the Bradleys were a pillar, a pillar holding up this church, and indeed, Mr. Bradley had a huge impact on new Christians like me. Would you pray with me, please? Dear God and Almighty Father in heaven, what a beautiful day you've blessed us with. Father, we pray that uh, you'd be with us as we memorialize a, a wonderful, beautiful example of a child of God. who has had such a major impression on so many lives, inclining hearts and minds and children and friends and neighbors, inclining hearts towards your son, in revealing all of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yes. Father, we praise you for the way your Holy Spirit led, yes. guided, protected, provided for Mabel. Amen. We praise you for the family that she and Leonard developed in your word, dependent on your son, revealing again your love for your children. Father in heaven, we pray that as we go through this memorial service that you would help us to avoid distraction, help us to remain focused, help us to glorify your name in all we do. Thank you so much for all of the time that you allowed us to spend with such a wonderful, beautiful child of God. We pray this in all things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It should be... Uh, a songbook near you. If not, uh, if you'll raise your hand, if there's not one near you, someone will get one to you. We'll begin uh, our singing this morning with number 587. Five eighty seven. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem gray all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. 
Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust in his promises grand. Sing and you'll be happy today. Press along to the goal. Trust in him who leadeth the way. He will keep your soul. Let the world know where you belong. Look to Jesus and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Often we are troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what the morrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can sing. Sing and you'll be happy today, press along to the goal. Trust in him who leadeth the way, he will keep your soul. Let the world know where you belong, look to Jesus and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song, singing we happy today. Off we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems the fortunes of earth frown and pass us by, there are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust in this day, we shall have pleasures untold. Sing and you be happy today, press along to the goal. Trust in him who leadeth the way, he will keep your soul. Let the world know where you belong, look to Jesus and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today. Good morning. I will now be reading the scripture, be doing scripture and prayer. Scripture I'll be reading from takes place in Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. Um, I'll be reading from the New International Version. The wife of noble character. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are cloth and scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed she is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done 
and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. I've just read for you Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. Shall we go to God in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you are, all that you have done, and all that you continue to do for every one of us. Thank you for your everlasting love that gives us strength, love that we do not deserve, but you provide for us anyway, love that we can always lean on and that allows all things to be possible. Thank you for everyone that is gathered here today for the homegoing service of my grandmother, Mabel Bradley. Thank you for the life that she lived, the lives that she touched, and the lives that she created. Thank you for blessing her to see 93 years on this earth. And for the faithful servant that she is, which allows her to live eternally with you now. I pray that today be a day of celebration of the legacy that she left and of her love that we now cherish in our hearts and in our minds. And although our hearts may be heavy, we can rest assured that she is in a far better place than we could ever imagine with you, our Lord and Savior. I pray that while we continue to live our lives, that we remember to seek you first, your kingdom, and your righteousness, so that all things may be added to us. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In your son's holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. Our next song will be number 412. <clears throat> 412. As I travel through this pilgrim, there is a friend who walks with me. Leads me safely through the sinking sand, it is the cross of Calvary. This would be my prayer to Lord each day, to help me do the best I can. For I need thy light to guide me day and night. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus, hold my hand. I need thee every hour. Through this pilgrim land, protect me by thy power. Hear my feeble plea. Oh, Lord, look down on me. As I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Let me travel in the light divine, that I may see the blessed way. Keep me that I may be holy, that sing redemption song someday. I will be a soldier brave and true, never turn we take a stand. As I onward go and daily meet the foe, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus, hold my hand. I need the every hour through this pilgrim land. Protect me by thy power. Hear my feeble plea. Oh, Lord, look down on me. As I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus, so my hand. When I wander through the valley, dim, toward the setting of the sun, lead me safely to the land of rest, fire crown of life have won. I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord, that I may reach that golden strand. 
There's no other friend on whom I can depend. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus, hold my hand. I need the every hour. Through this pilgrim land, protect me by thy power. Hear my feeble plea, O oh Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. At this time, we want to take the opportunity to allow anyone who would care to share a word or, uh, with regard to Mabel Bradley, our mother. Um, we want to invite you to come and to take two minutes, if you will, um, to share maybe something you remember or something you want others to know um, with regard to Ma. And uh, as I'm standing here now, I just want to express my gratitude and appreciation for everyone who has come from far and near, um, old friends and family members. Um, it's just a delight to see all of you. And we're glad to have you here for this moment in time. And so now we're going to ask you, if you will, um, you can not all come at once, but Maybe one at a time, I guess you can stand here and uh, share or stand on the floor and share, but please do come and take a moment to share. Hello, everyone. My name is Leah Ford, and I am one of the grandchildren. And I just wanna share with you all why my grandmother was my favorite person. In my opinion, my grandmother had a PhD in caring for her family and others. She could anticipate the needs of others like no one I have ever known. She took specific care to love each and every one of us uniquely. The love she gave to me has gone unmatched. From advice to monetary gifts, to caring for me when I was sick, to cooking the food just the way I like it, and I'm a very picky eater. Um, my grandmother knew that I don't like hot liquids, so gravy and soups never touch my plate. She knew I liked raw fruit, but cooked fruit was out of the question. Today, <laughs> to this day, and my husband can attest, um, restaurants across America have their hands full preparing my meals, all because of my grandmother. She has shown up in pivotal moments of my life. She was in the birthing room for my child. She gave me sound advice too many times to count. She taught me how to cook over the phone. Now those of you who really know me know that teaching me how to cook in my late 30s is just short of a miracle. <laughs> really, I'm not kidding either. <laughs> They're laughing because they know it's true. <laughs> um, she taught me to think past the present and to prepare, to prepare for the future. And maybe that's why I always have a plan A through Z. Above all else, she taught me the importance of family. She said we don't get to choose them, but we get to love them in our own way. She was so wise and I miss her already. I thank God that, <clears throat> whew, that he, he chose her to be my grandmother. I wouldn't, want have <clears throat> I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Thank you. my kid off too. <laughs> oh man. Hello everybody. I did want to share a few words as well about my grandmother. Um, and I just kind of want to share, well there's a light up here, some of the lessons that, you know, she taught me 
the times that I was able to spend with her. Um, so my grandmother taught me how to love my family. Um, when I was eight and 10 years old, I would spend summers here in Springfield, and I've even come here on occasion um, when I was here. And every Saturday, I remember watching grandmother cook a meal for her family so that on Sundays after church, all the family could come over to her house to eat. And um, needless to say, Sundays became my favorite day um, because not only did I get to worship and praise the Lord, I got to eat a great meal and spend time with the people I love, right? Um, and I also remember asking grandmother why I stayed with her at least 20 times a day if she would play cards with me, whether it be Uno or Tonk or Crazy Eights or whatever. And you know, it's crazy to think, like I don't ever remember her ever saying no. And now that I'm a parent, like I understand the sacrifices <laughs> that it took for her to like make time for me to do that. Like she would just be like, yeah, okay. Not before her stories though. We had to wait till after her stories. But, <laughs> but she did always make time to play with me um, and play games with me. And that it's things like that, you know, the tiny little sacrifices that she would make to let you know that you were special and that you were loved. Um, that's what I remember most about her. Ah, my phone locked on me. Um, so yeah, so now that I even have my own family, um, I find myself, as I'm cooking meals or you know doing whatever, I find myself reflecting and remembering and applying the lessons that my grandmother taught me. And so, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm grateful that I got to know her because to know her was to love her. And I'm just so grateful that I had her in my life, that I had her this long because, I mean, I really do have a lot of who I am. I really owe to her. So thank you, grandmother. I love you and rest well in heaven. Hello, everybody. Well, yeah, I guess you can tell by I'm not a grandchild. Um, <laughs> I'd love to claim it, but it's not. That was my aunt. And when, when, I, um, when I had to tell my church family and my friends that my aunt had passed away, they said, what's her name? I said, Aunt Mommy. And they kept asking me, what's her name? I says, Aunt Mommy. And, and I realized that I didn't know, I knew her name, but I never called her anything but Aunt Mommy. Because that's what she was to us. Every Sunday after church, we were at Aunt Mommy's house or Aunt Lou's house. And we were some bad little kids. We weren't, I don't know if I'm supposed to tell y'all that. We was really bad. Nisi, Tracy, Lenny, all of, we look nice adults now, but we was really, <laughs> And I remember Aunt Mommy would always save me. She said, now, Lou, leave that child. And she was so soft. Lou, leave that child alone. And I was hoping my mother could hear her. Because was, she was just amazing. And, and she, all I can remember how quiet she was and how quietly she walked in her wisdom and in her truth. She didn't have to be loud and, and, and overbearing, but she just knew that she was there for you. And she had this, all I can remember, she had the softest hands because she was always getting me out of trouble and kind of holding me and keeping me from being in some more trouble. But Aunt Mommy was amazing. I can just remember the house. I would come here and just drive by that house because that was the house that we went to and played in the backyard. That's the house that we went to and grew up with all of my cousins. It was the house that represented love and honesty and everything that, that this family stands for. So I just wanted to get up and pay a tribute to my auntie, my Aunt Mommy. She might be Mabel Bradley to y'all, but she's my Aunt Mommy. Thanks.
Good morning, everybody. My name is Jackie, and I'd like to say that I knew Brother Bradley, and he was a dear brother, and Sister Mabel Bradley. You're right, she was a strong, quiet, but you know she had the strength to carry her through. And I could see from her children, grandchildren, that she was a major figure in, their fa in the family. So to Renee, Denise, Patrice, Lenny, thank you for sharing a wonderful, powerful woman with us over the years. And she also would call me, like she did everybody else, precious, just like Brother Bradley. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Joe Pierce. I'm one of the elders at the Southwest Church of Christ. And just want to give my condolences on behalf of Southwest to the family. Um, Sister Bradley has always visited us. I've known her for many, many years at Northside and at Southwest. And it was always a blessing to have her come to visit. Always a smile, always a positive word to say, and just enjoyed being in her company. So I just, on behalf of Southwest, just want to give you our condolences and you and our prayers, and we love you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Gloria. I'm just a friend of the family, a long, lifelong friend of the family. Tracy, Renee, Lenny, yeah. <laughs> all of you. I'm just, I'm touched. I'm touched because I'm sad that we lost a dear person. But I want you to know, I didn't even know her first name. I didn't need to know her first name. As they say in my healthcare field, I'm on a need to know basis and I only needed to know Mrs. Bradley and mommy and precious. And she was, she was endearing. I lost my mom at an early, early age. I felt like I was in heaven when I went to the Bradley home. I felt like I was embraced by everyone in that family, their relatives. And those of you that are speaking, I probably was there in the midst of you when you were doing what you were doing. <laughs> But I loved the movement in that home. I loved the, there was just love. I never heard anyone yell. It was always a soft spoken spirit of warmth in the Bradley household. So again, I'm from another neighborhood. I was a friend of Denise's from forever. <laughs> I saw, I know some of the grandchildren and, but it's so, so wonderful to see everyone here. You all feel, probably feel the same way I do. She was beloved, she was special. And I, I just, I'm telling you, she just shaped my life, hearing her speak to me in such a gentle tone and a kind tone. And I was just a visitor, visiting Denise. I knew to be good, though. <laughs> God bless you all. So if there are no others at this time, we'll have our video presentation. Number 898. Oh, you can show that
when did you change? Did I look away for too long? Well, I was just holding your hand, trying to help you cross over to the place next to me, where you're always safe in the shelter of my heart. Someone told me you can love too much, but I believe it can never be enough. We'll surround you in the comfort of us, and you'll always know the strength of our love in the shelter of our heart. In the shelter of our hearts, in the shelter of our hearts. Number 898. 898. <clears throat> As I travel through life with its trouble and strife, I have a glorious hope to give cheer on the way. Soon my toil will be o'er, and I'll rest on that shore where the night has been turned into day. Up in Paradise Valley, by the side of the river of life, up in Paradise Valley, we'll be free from all burden, all strife. There we'll live in the garden, need the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the Paradise Valley, when the beauty of heaven I'll see. As I roam the hillside, or I list to the tide, as I pluck the sweet flowers that grow in the dale, faint nature is there of a land bright and fair, where perennial flowers never fail. 
up in Paradise Valley, by the side of the river of life. Up in Paradise Valley, we'll be free from all pain and all strife. There we'll live in the garden, neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the Paradise Valley, where the beauty of heaven I'll see. Though your garden is rare, it is not to compare with the flowers that bloom in the garden above. In the midst of it grows Sharon's perfect sweet rose. Tis the wonderful flower of love. Up in Paradise Valley, by the side of the river of life. Up in Paradise Valley, we'll be free from all pain and all strife. There we'll live in the garden, neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the Paradise Valley, where the beauty of heaven I'll see. From the Lehigh Valley Church of Christ in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, dated May 20th, 2023, to Patrice Moore and family. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. We, the membership of Lehigh Valley Church of Christ, wish to express our heartfelt sympathy in the home going of our, your loved one, Sister Mabel L. Bradley. Our heart, hearts go out to you as you endure this loss. Yet, we must not grieve without hope, for we wait for the day of great rejoicing when all of God's children will gather together and inherit the joys of heaven. We know that God loves you unfailingly, and he is with you during this time. In times like these, encourage yourself in the Lord and rely upon the word of God for strength, comfort, and peace. We have his assurance that the ultimate end is not death, but eternal life. Be assured that we will be upholding you in prayer. Therefore, on behalf of our entire church family, we offer this letter as an expression of our deepest love and concern for you and your family. May God be your refuge and your strength, a very present help in your hour of bereavement. With loving thoughts and sympathy, Derek Bean, Minister, Lehigh Valley Church of Christ. And a resolution from Liberty Christian Center International in Hartford, Connecticut, again dated fri Friday, May 26, 2023. Whereas the entire Liberty Christian Center International family has been saddened by the news of the passing of Mabel Bradley of Springfield, Massachusetts, the aunt of Reverend Lisa Marie Sykes, Deacon William Sykes, and Sister Cheryl Oliver, who are faithful and dedicated members of Liberty Christian Center International, and whereas Reverend Lisa Marie serves on the ministerial staff and as director of the food pantry, and Sister Cheryl Oliver serves as an usher and a member of the Women of Grace, we join with family members and friends in extending heartfelt sympathy and prayers that God will comfort you in your hour of sorrow and Whereas Mabel L. Bradley lived to the age of 93, 
We give thanks to the Father for extending her life and for causing her family to be blessed with her presence until her death. And whereas we know that the death of a loved one is a tremendous trauma to the heart and spirit of survivors, we pray that the legacy bequeathed by her life will bless generations to come and that the God of comfort who comforts us all will give hope to those who hold his name, heritage, and memories in trust. Therefore, be it resolved that with the strength of the Heavenly Father, we stand ready to support you as you go through these difficult days of adjustment. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family signed and sealed by the Order of the Liberty Christian Center International on this 26th day of May in the 2023rd year of our Lord. Submitted with compassion and reverence, the Liberty Christian Center International Church family. Number 744. At this time, we're going to have the reading of the obituary, Leah. Maybe I'll, oops. There used to be a step stool up here last time I was here. What y'all do with the step stool? Okay. He took it with him. He, he took it with him. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Mabel L. Bradley was born on April 1st, 1930 in St. Petersburg, Florida. She migrated to New England in 1948 together with her partner, Leonard C. Bradley Sr., whom God called home on September 13th, 1999. She was born the fifth daughter of 10 children to the union of Pearl Davis and Joe Stotts of St. Petersburg, Florida. On May 9th, 2023, Mabel was called to be with the Lord. When Mabel was a young child, Marco and Patrona Lewis, neighbors who did not have children, asked her parents, Pearl and Joe Stotts, if they could adopt her. Instead, Pearl agreed to let her live with the Lewis family when she was eight years old. When Patrona Lewis died, Mabel returned home at the age of 12. Her dog was named Rex and her cat, Snowball. Mabel attended public schools in St. Petersburg and graduated with a high school diploma. Having a hearing impairment since childhood, she developed a reserved and quiet spirit. She lived a comfortable life of independence, solitude, and contentment. Mabel obeyed the gospel of Christ and was baptized into the Lord's body at the age of 12. She grew up worshiping at the 20th Street Church of Christ in St. Petersburg, where her father, Joe Stotts, served as a deacon and later as an elder. This is where she also met Leonard C. Bradley Sr., her partner and future husband. Together, they migrated to Hartford, Connecticut when she was 18 and eventually to Springfield, Massachusetts to continue building their lives and family for the next 44 years. Mabel was a central center of her family. She was quiet, abiding, she was a quiet, abiding presence and loved spending time with her four children, eight grandchildren, 11 great grandchildren, and two great great grandchildren. She enjoyed reading, journalizing, journaling, puzzle books, computer games, music, Scrabble, and traveling. She had an open mind about all things that did not conflict with God and the reverence he deserves. Seven forty four. Seven forty four. We're part of the family that's been born again. Part of the family whose love knows no end. For Jesus has saved us and made us his own. 
Now we're part of the family that's on its way home. And sometimes we laugh together, sometimes we cry, sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs. Sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven, God's family. When a brother meets arrow, we all feel his grief when he's passed through the valley. We all feel relieved together in sunshine, together in rain, together in victory through his precious name. And sometimes we laugh together, sometimes we cry, sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs. Sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven, God's family. And though some go before us, we'll all meet again just in the city as we enter in there'll be no more parting with jesus we'll be together forever god's family and sometimes we laugh together, sometimes we cry, sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs, sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven, God's family. It's a big deal when a long-standing matriarch of a family dies and leaves in our hearts for who she was to us. Mom was a strong woman. She lived a full and blessed life, 93 years. She honored the Lord, Jesus Christ, living for him, serving others, showing no fear, sharing his love, guiding her children and her husband to be the best family of God that we could be. She was quite quiet, a quiet presence, unless she had to be clear 
and verbally convincing. <laughs> so I'm gonna need y'all to help me through this. This is, this, you know, daddy used to say, you know, don't make your eyes bigger than your stomach. You know, bite off more than you can chew. But I am honored to have this privilege today. Um, to share this time with all of you who love us and who love our mother. And so I'm going to work through this, and y'all work with me. I may have a moment or two, but when I come back, we'll continue on. <laughs> she sacrificed, managed, worked, and gave everything for her family. For me, it was evident at Christmas, Sundays, Easter Sundays, Sunday dinners, and shopping for school clothes, the highlight of my life. She gave us her spirit and all that she wanted us to experience as children. Bicycles, dance, karate, roller skating, summer vacations, work, and worship. She gave us memories to keep in our hearts. I asked my sister to describe mom as she saw her. She said in a word, <clears throat> magnificent. Not that mom worked to do things spectacularly, although she was thorough, she lived in simplicity. She was modest, quietly elegant, practical, and industrious. She combined being a mother with sacrifice and contentment to make it possible to serve and meet the needs of her family. Her service was selfless and all-inclusive. It was just interesting to hear Leah talk about mom knowing her particular thing that she liked. And as she said that, I was thinking, well, she knew the particular thing that I liked, too. And she made it her business to make sure that she gave everyone what they liked. Again, I asked my sisters, where did you get your motivation? Where did your motivation come from to do as you did for mom, to serve her? The same theme resonated. I wanted to do for her as she had done for me. My memories of mom are many, some of which I am proud to talk about and some not so proud. <laughs> it was the process of living, loving, and learning that we shared on the good and bad days. They were the conditions by which a family survives and thrives. And when it comes to my mom, I can say I am content. There's nothing more I need from her to know that I was loved. We had her love, and it was enough. As daddy would say, if I had to do it all again, I wouldn't change a thing. Contentment. Paul said in Philippians 4.11, not that I complain of want, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. She lived a comfortable life of independence, solitude, and contentment. Having had a hearing impairment since childhood, she developed a reserved and quiet spirit. I knew she was quiet. I knew she had hearing difficulty. I did not know that those conditions helped to shape her core contentment. She was content to love by God's ability to give her the strength. Not physical strength alone, but wisdom, intuition, 
unselfishness, sacrificing all she could for her family. Contentment was her strength. Mom formed her life with the hand she was dealt, which she never complained to be unfair, as we were blessed to be her children. She wore her contentment like a modest dress of clothing. It was displayed, it displayed rather a character tailored to what she enjoyed, not wishing or shopping for more. What she enjoyed most was her family. You might say, well, in that case, anybody can be content. That's right. But let's not overlook that her contentment was founded on trust in the Lord. Mom was content to trust in God's providence. She was satisfied with the providence and goodness of God to accept that whatever he determined is best. I am perfectly satisfied. Providence means that God allows things to happen in our lives for good or bad to allow us a choice to choose him or not. The motivation to be content is from a belief that God is right in all of his ways. His judgments are right. His word is right. His righteousness is right. His love is right. His will is right. His ways are right. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all of his doings. Psalm 145. Contentment is an inner humility tied to God's providence quietly praising him for what he has done for you and through you. We noted that mom liked to write in a journal, and we, we got a hold of that thing, or well, at least one of the remnants of one. I just want to just share just a few words before I go to my next thought. Um, and that is that uh, first Oh, nine, this goes back. Glory and honor to Jesus, she writes, who suffered and died to save us all from our sins. What a wonderful day in remembrance of him. It was a good day for me. My thoughts, I'll just share just a few of these, just to share, just so you know where her head was. My thoughts and concerns were all over the place today thinking about Christine and Denise and the boys and about Tracy. Finally, Tracy called tonight. I was happy to hear her voice. I was thinking she was sick again, but it turns out she's okay. Brian and Bria were sick. So you hear where her thoughts are about her family, her children, her concerns, her interests. And there was one other thought that I really appreciated and I don't know if I'm going to take the time to find it right now, but it was that she praised God for giving her what she had. And she noted that um, her greatest blessing or her greatest achievement was her children. It was a beautiful thought. Mom was content to trust in God's plan for her salvation. At the age of 12, Mabel obeyed the gospel of Christ and was baptized into the Lord's body. She believed and obeyed the Lord, his word, the Bible. She grew up worshiping in the church of Christ. We grew up worshiping in the church of Christ. She worshiped and served God till she called so she was called home. She accepted Christ, his teaching, his truth, his foundation for her salvation. She worshiped him faithfully, living a life devoted to the Lord and teaching her children to do the same. I don't think I turned out too bad. 
God's plan of salvation is to be believed. It's, be, it's to believe the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As true, he came from glory, was crucified and buried for the sins of mankind, yours and mine, whom God raised to live again. So you and I can have the hope of eternal life. Mom obeyed and followed the teaching of the faith in obedience, in accord with the Bible. The Bible was written for our learning and understanding. All scripture is inspired of God and given uh, to guide us in instruction and righteousness that we are thoroughly equipped unto every good work. The Bible was written for our learning. The Bible teaches us that faith. The Bible teaches us repentance. The Bible teaches us confessing Jesus Christ to be the Son of God. The Bible and being buried with him in the waters of baptism for the remission of our sins. And the Spirit of Christ comes into our hearts. That's God's plan. He laid it out plain that even my mother could understand at 12. And she obeyed. And so did I. So did my children. So did my sisters. So did my family. We obeyed the word of the Lord as our mother guided us to do. And I think she turned out all right too. <laughs> the other day, I was at the airport getting a car. And the man behind the counter confided in me, I had a hat on, and it said Jesus one way. He saw that hat, and it was a good, nice conversation piece my son-in-law gave me that hat, but anyway, he was having a bad day and a difficult time because he was suffering the consequences of his decision. He needed comfort, and he was reaching for a word from God. And as he talked and I listened, I asked him, I said, do you read your Bible or do you read the Bible? Y'all know what he said, right? Sometimes I read it and on occasions I don't. You know, he just, just flippantly loose about the Bible. And I was glad that it was just not a flat out no. I asked him, how often do you eat? And he said, about five times a day, <laughs> I said you need to read the Bible as often as you eat. He took that word. He walked with me out to the car, gave me a car that I didn't expect. I prayed with him, and he gave me the biggest hug that he wanted to give me. Mom obeyed God's plan of salvation. She knew how she became a Christian as we all should know. Mom was content to trust and give God the reverence he deserves. As the, the obituary says, Mabel enjoyed reading and journaling. She had an open mind about all things that did not conflict with God and the reverence he deserves. He deserves us to seek him by reading, Praying, serving, giving, talking about him, worshiping him, loving one another, and loving him with all of our hearts, souls, and minds. Nothing in this life is worth more than knowing that the Lord knows you because you obey and reverence him. Mom made mistakes. She had droughts. She made decisions that God would not be pleased to see her make. However, even on a bad day, she revered him, revered him. In the way she lived, how she loved and respected her husband, what she taught her children. She was content with the Lord's providence, the plan for her life, his presence. For 81 years, 
with a few bumps along the way. And I say 81 as a Christian. My best memories are attending church and worship. I truly believe in those experiences. I was secretly being groomed to become a preacher. Getting the look or having the ear twisted or being taken out of worship service for pep talks. <laughs> I saw mom's love in so many ways. Through gifts, her presence, her teaching, her organization, her intentional support of my life's journey. Her impact on me gave me confidence to take charge of my life. She instilled the courage in me to push back against my physically aggressive younger sister, Renee. <laughs> she whispered to me, when she comes to hit you, you turn around and do like this. It worked. <laughs> Ever since, I've been looking for new ways to make her run the other way. <laughs> you can come home, but not hang out on the corner, is what she said to me as I was discharged from the Coast Guard. Again, it forced me to decide to go to college and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul's words resonated with me. On the most difficult night, I saw my mom go through during her transition. I heard what sounded like moans to me. Let me get my Bible. It was a Thursday night, and it was a tough night. And it sounded like moans, and uh, the nurse explained to us that, you know, there was to be some sighing going on and other things that were happening in that moment. But as I listened and I heard her, I thought about what Paul said. As he said, for we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building with God. A house not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens. Here indeed we groan and long to put on our heavenly dwelling so that by putting it on, we may not be found naked, unclothed, but that we would further be clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life, and who he who has prepared us this very thing is God. What has been given us is the Spirit as a guarantee. Mabel has left the building. No worry. No to worry. God has prepared a house not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens, she's moved to a new home. She's guaranteed a home because she accepted God's plan for her salvation. He gave her his spirit. She abided in his word, in his life, for, all, for most of her life, all the life that I knew. We remain here as survivors or as mourners. We remain in a temporary tent or dwelling here now. But we can also receive his spirit as a guarantee if we follow in the plan that she followed. And that plan is God's plan. And he doesn't make different plans for different people because we look different or walk different. Or, we're human beings and God has one plan. And that plan is Jesus Christ who said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. 
And if we accept his plan, we too shall share in the hope of eternal life, just like my mama, Mabel L. Bradley. Simply put, in the words of Paul, mom's legacy, not that I complain of want, for I have learned in whatever state I am, to be content. Okay, with that, we will invite Henderson Funeral Home. To come forward. We're going to continue the service uh, for a committal at the Hillcrest Park Cemetery at 895 Parker Street in Springfield. And we invite all of you to attend if you can. Um, Oh yeah, we got one song. We do have a song. Would you all stand with me and turn to number 610, please? <clears throat> number 610. While you're, while, you're, uh, while you're doing that, um, I got to thinking about I had the, the privilege of escorting Miss Mabel to her seat on Sunday mornings. And um, I think it happened by accident. I just happened to be coming in at the same time she was one Sunday morning and I saw her having some difficulty coming up the stairs. So I just walked over and, and gave her my arm and, and walked her to a seat. And that became our Sunday habit. And, and I loved every minute of it. And um, whenever I wasn't here, off on vacation or wherever, when I got back, I had to push people out of the way. I had to elbow them over so I could get back to my job. And if I got distracted at some point, Renee would make sure she told me, you dropping your, the ball. You, you, you're supposed to be out here doing this. Number 610. Jesus, my heavenly king, loves me, I know. Praises to him I sing, onward I go. Closely to him I cling, blessings will flow. I love my Savior too. I love my Savior. He loves me too. And seek his favor in everything I do. Walking with him each day, love light does shine. Doing his will and way, never repine. Kneeling in him I pray, thy will not mine. I love my Savior too. I love my Savior, he loved me too. I seek his favor in everything I do. 
happy to share my friend, lean on his arm. Rapture will never end, nothing alarm. Voices will sweetly blend under his charm. I love my Savior too. I love my Savior. He loves me too. I see his favor in everything I do. Please. 